so I'm here with Aaron. Yep. And Aaron, your your title with Delta Hot? Uh, I'm the lead engine tech. So all the engine builds that happen uh, currently, I'm, I'm in charge of all of them. Okay, so Aaron's been helping bring me up to speed. I've got a lot of pictures of this engine on published on the, the forum, the uh, RV14 Delta Hawk forum. We're going to cover some stuff that I just can't cover myself, and I think Aaron's, Aaron's a lot better at covering. So I think first off, could you just tell us a little bit about just the history of this engine, you know, what the basis is, what kind of engine is it, and, and why we're talking about a Delta oh, yeah. um, in this two cycle, two stroke diesel yeah. config? Definitely. Okay, so uh, Delta Hawk, it's a uh, two stroke, uh, 180 horse. We do have a 200 a, uh, and a 235. Uh, the interesting thing with those is real quick is they're all the same engine, same footprint. Uh, with it being a compression ignition and direct injection and stuff, you all you have to do is tweak timing, increase the boost, you get more horsepower. So when you look at our specs, that's why people see that similarity between weights and everything. Uh, real quick, yeah, so like I said before, it is um, compression ignition, uh, it's two stroke, it's all mechanical, there's no FADEX systems like that. It is, uh, it's supercharged and turbocharged, uh, the redundancy there is nice. Uh, you know, if, if, if for some reason you were to lose, let's say your supercharger, the turbo can still kick in. Uh, there's a bypass in there that allows boosts to still come through and vice versa uh, for both of them. Uh, you see it, like I said, you see it in an A configuration. Uh, we can run it in an A, a V, uh, straight up and down, uh, counter rotating with that dry sump oil system that we have. That's what you see right here. But in the RVs, we'll probably be running it in this in, Yeah, in an A, and, and typically that's what we have been doing. Uh, the nice thing with ours is that if we ever get into an installation where we can't do that or we, it just doesn't work, then we can flip it any just orientation. Um, yeah, so that dry sump oil system, that's really nice because it's always uh, constantly, it's, it's feeding oil, but it's also taking out oil. It's constant all the time. And what, what, like I said, what's going in, it's just leaving enough in there to keep everything lubricated, well lubricated, uh, but it's also returning all that extra stuff back to the tank. Kind of the nice thing with our setup is there's a tank that's sucking from multiple locations. A um, couple more questions though. So, uh, two stroke diesel. Yep. Uh, all I, ports. And correct me if I miss anything, it's about 20 to 1 compression. Yep, yeah, 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 20 to 1. Uh, so nice high compression, but that's what you want with that with that uh, compression ignition. Uh, it is all ported, there's no valves. A lot of guys like to compare us to the Detroit diesel, which there are similarities, uh -huh. sure. Uh, but even they had an exhaust valve. And this is all ports. Okay, so, so none of that, no valves. None no of that. No spark plug nope. um, to deal with. Uh, what else am I missing? Uh, yeah, so uh, it's also the nice thing with ours, which a lot of people like, is that it's liquid cooled. Uh, so if you look down here, the, the coolant pumps right here, and uh, it all just kind of flows really nice through through uh, the block and everything and, and comes back out. So you still have a uh, thermostat. And uh, I always like to tell people that it's nice because when you're doing your, your cabin heat, uh, you don't have to do that whole exhaust setup like they do. Right. You just use... Um, Kind of like a heater core, like you would in your automotive setting. Okay. And uh, you just use the the coolant, the hot coolant that's there. So another couple of things too. There's no plenum on this, and that's because we're water cooled, oil cooled. So that's really taking care of the engine. The only other exchange heat exchangers for the intercooler, right? Yeah, the the, the intercooler, and then you, you will have an oil cooler too. Okay. Uh, typically, that that's what we like to do. Yeah. So water, oil, and intercooler. Yep. Yep. But again, there's no baffling to put on this. No. Correct. No plenum to build. Correct. Um, and then two for people who are seeing this right now, I, I wanted to mention that this is kind of the latest generation. Yes. Yeah. And so the, the the one generation before this that you guys did the certification work, um, that's going on my 14, which is parked over there. We'll do the flight testing. In the background, we're building a second 14, and we'll be getting that dialed in as we're flying that one, but that's what this engine is. Correct. Could you walk through a couple of things that you did on this Gen 1 versus that one? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so just, I mean, in the casting alone, you can kind of see the difference, and, uh, you know, we did go with someone else for that one, and uh, just looking at it, uh, we've taken a lot of weight out of it. I mean, the block alone, they took about 19 pounds out and of it. And by the way, it looks amazing. It does, would, it I is. I would actually want to take my cowling off a lot. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, when we first got this one in and we built it, we were really excited about the whole thing. It's a beautiful engine. Yeah, so the, the block has a lot of weight taken out. Uh, the flywheel, you can see the difference between, uh, you know, if you look at the pictures online versus this one right here, yeah, there's so all these lightning holes in it. And, and also, did the diameter yes. shrink a bit? Yep. Yeah, because if you look at the, the nose cone 
in the front on my 14 over there with the previous gen, it looks substantially bigger. So it looks like you shaved a little weight and Correct. physical size. Yep, yep. Okay. And then obviously, you know, we've, we've uh, improved some design stuff that, that we've gone through. Well, and I wanted to make a point of letting people know that because when they see the flight videos on the test fuel that we're doing right now, and the cowling, that all will change a bit yeah. when we put this engine on. That is correct. The yep. Okay. Yeah, and we always like to tell you know people that when they see the RV, the, wow, that's the first kind of generation of it. Even the, our Cirrus has changed so many different times just throughout the, the, yeah. the, the history of, of us having it. Uh, another thing that we really like now is that these new blocks, they actually, instead of, uh, they have a lot of internal oil passages now, oh, okay. right? So an easy one to just kind of notice if you're just looking at it is that the prop governor, there used to be an oil feed line that would come all the way out to the nose. It's all internal, yeah, right? Yeah, I noticed a, a distinct lack of hoses compared yeah. to the other ones. Yeah, so, so the insulation is gonna look real clean. Uh, less hoses, is less weight. I mean, it's not much, but it is weight and it's less things to, to leak. Okay. Uh, so we, we definitely like that it's all internal now. Well, and okay, so those are big things. Can we, would you mind if we kind of went front to back? That's, and yep. kind of showed people what's going on? In the front, we've got, and you'll have to correct my terminology, <laughs> but I always call these a serpentine belt. Yeah. And it looks like it's capturing the alternator. The uh, super and the coolant pump. The, okay, yeah, the coolant pump and the supercharger, which is down below, mm -hmm. which probably can't see unless you can see in that. Um, and my understanding, we talked earlier, but you said that we don't know what the, the maintenance interval will be on that. Yeah, we, we don't know that exactly. When we did our, our, uh, our uh, endurance run with the FA, the belt uh, stayed on the whole time. And that's normally how we typically do it. Uh, so we're kind of just honing in on when those okay. maintenance intervals are going to be. Well, the be. good thing is it'll be a relatively easy yeah. thing yeah. to change. Yeah, yeah, it's not a difficult thing to change. So when you're looking at the engine, we got alternator here, we got a starter here. Mm -hmm. Uh, you had mentioned already, this is the fuel pump. That's the oil pump. Or, sorry, the oil pump. Yeah, and the nice thing, now, so our oil pumps, uh, if you look at some of the earlier generation stuff, like the cutaway that we have over there, uh, we actually have a two-stage scavenge now and a single pressure, which is just having multiple sta scavenge stages is uh, definitely ideal for this, the dry sump system that we're running. Okay. Um, what, what are we looking at here? So this is the delivery fuel pump, and that'll just take your fuel from the tank and it'll deliver it to back here, which is your high pressure okay, fuel pump. Okay, so the high pressure fuel pump's here on the back. And then, so I can see here we've got coolant hose, coolant hose, exhaust. Yep. Um, and then you had mentioned it's it's all mechanical fuel injection. Yeah, yeah, so no FedEx, it's all, it's all just, uh, um, uh, so it's direct injection and each cylinder has its own separate uh, supply. So if you look back here in the in the high pressure fuel pump, each cylinder has its own delivery um, delivery setup. And uh, so a lot of people are like, oh, it's common rail. Well, no, it's not. Uh, okay. Each one has its own. You can see the injectors here. Each line is going straight to its own. Right here, there's a camshaft in there that kind of runs, and it's timed out with the engine, and uh, that's kind of how that all works together. It's a lot simpler when it's broken down, uh, but that's kind of the simple way. And it's nice because it's not relying on, like, right, if you lose one thing, you're not losing all of them. And then, uh, are we also, um, we also have uh, ports for the probes, right? Uh, yeah, so like when you go to, for inspection intervals, I'm guessing what you're talking about. Yeah. So there are glow plug ports. There are glow plugs on this, um, and you would just simply take it off and you can get right in there and see the cylinder. So poke in, and, and then you, I think you had mentioned these guys up here. Yeah, those also, are gonna be really good inspection ports. There's four of them, so each side you can kind of get in there and see the bottom end of the cylinder. So literally, if I pull these, I can put a boroscope in there and see the crankshaft Correct. right there. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, and then the nice thing that we have our setup in a way that there, there's tells on the flywheel itself that'll tell you where top dead on cylinder one is so you don't have to sit there and kind of guess because a lot of guys when you're inspecting they don't know too much you can kind of set that and it'll all be available in the main okay screen. yeah yeah so we'll, 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 we normally run a CHT GTs which is nice because that kind of tells you what's going on with You'll have a manifold temperature and manifold pressure, uh, which tells you a lot. We'll have our, our turbo uh, inlet pressures and outlet pressures, okay. temperatures like that. So yeah, it'll, it'll be, and if you look at our planes here, they're really decked out. I always like to tell people that, you know, it looks crowded right now, but we, uh, we have to censor our stuff a lot more than what their, right. the final product or uh, package is going to be like, which I'm sure your RV is going to have some stuff because they're going to want data from that. But the second one is probably going to look nice and clean and sleek. Yeah, like I said, this one is, is dropped in yeah. gorgeous. And look at the parts count here the fact that you know there's no valves 
Yeah, it's about 40% less moving parts than your conventional light like on the Yeah, so much less. And then um, on the supercharger and the turbocharger, what are you guys expecting on that? Uh, that's the, Their life expectancy is probably a, a, is going to be the same as, as the engine itself. I mean, typically superchargers and turbos, it, it, as far as what we've seen, they, they last a really long time. Okay. And that's their own in-house design that we've done, uh, and we've gone through a lot of testing over and over and over. Well, and if I'm wrong, but I think you led the team that did the stuff for the FAA for the certification Yeah, process. so the, the build and then the, the teardown version of it, I was the one that got to do that in front of the FAA, and uh, that was definitely a, a fun fun process to be a part of, and, and they were really impressed with uh, with how everything looked. And uh, I mean, the testing that we had to go through was uh, it was pretty intense since the last time something had been done was 1965, uh, somewhere around there, so. <laughs> Yeah, no one's braved those waters in all the time. <laughs> yeah. right? Is there an air, air filter? There is an air filter. Yeah, because the, the... It'll go right right on this side of the turbo. Okay. So there'll be an air filter uh, that just kind of filters. Yeah, and is states. it sucking air I'm from yep. here, or are you routing it in? No, it's, it, there'll be an air filter, and it all depends on the installation. They're all set up a little differently. Uh, the Sears is a little different than the Twins, and in yours be at a different location, but ultimately it's the same, it's the same spot that it, it's taking. Okay. We've got two, two areas back here that we can mount stuff. What is this? That's your uh, prop governor. Mm -hmm. so that's where your prop governor will go. And then this one's just uh, an extra accessory, so an air pump, an alternator, something like okay, that. Okay, so that could be backup alternator exactly. back there. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's funny. My personal opinion is I don't think we need a backup alternator. Because uh, uh, in talking to you guys, this engine does not need electrical power to operate. What, if you're up and flying and you lost your alternator, you're not losing the engine. Correct. That is correct. And then, uh, you know, my, my attitude is now, and that's what I'm doing on my 14, uh, the Garmin Avionics, and I think all of them now, they've got backup capability with batteries. So you're good there. And then finally, I run a Stratus. And a and four flight on an iPad. The Stratus has a 12-hour battery. The four flight will last two hours on my pad. So, um, but I get it. Some people may want a backup alternator. Yeah. Um, yeah. We kind of we, we did that intentionally, just with that thought in mind. That if someone wants something to run off your accessory, that they still can. They can still eliminate some, uh, the possibilities for it. Well, I can't think of anything else to ask, Aaron. Um, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm so excited about this engine. I think you guys are the first legitimate alternative to a Lyco. I mean, there's so many things to like about it from the fuel efficiency, the altitude performance, the maintenance. And then on top of that, the latest iteration you guys have done is beautiful looking. Yeah, no, we are definitely excited and we're thankful for, for you to work with us and, and get the opportunity to kind of show everyone what we're all about. Well, and last but not least, definitely I want the uh, purple ring yeah. on mine. Yeah, it's a good little touch the, on there. The bling stands out <laughs> really good there. Yeah. Anyway, th thanks very much. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure I'll have more questions as time goes, but I think this is going to really help a lot of the people who yeah, are. Yeah, I hope so. And, and, you know, we always encourage people to visit the website and kind of our social medias and, and check us out. And questions, we're always open to answer. Okay, cool. <laughs> anyway, thanks. Yeah.